Welcome back friends. As promised, I told you guys I would give you an updated review on my new camera, uh, the new uh, M the Canon M50. Um, I've had about three weeks to shoot with it exclusively, using it every day, um, and I, I've come to the conclusion that it, it as of uh, 2019 January, um, that it's probably the best option out there uh, for the common man, for the common person, uh, wants to get into vlogging or making YouTube videos or has been making YouTube videos for a long time. Um, I guess I, I'm falling back on my experience as a content creator uh, that I've done this for over 10 years. Um, I've done it uh, for a living every day for what, six or seven, or six or so. Um, and so I do it every day and I've learned a lot of things and made a lot of mistakes with the camera. And what I thought, when I thought the complexity was the, was the solution and bigger and better quality, what I found is that became a hindrance to creativity and going back to your roots, going back to something a little bit smaller and simpler that's less fiddly, um, is a, it not only is it a better experience for the creator, uh, but because you're happy and you're not frustrated with equipment that's, that's difficult to work with, it comes out in your, comes through in your content, you make better content and you're more likely to make it when it's not a hassle. Let me bring you in, it's, it's highly modified, high, highly customized from the last time you saw it. Um, this is something that works really good if you are a daily user. Um, just a few points, I'll show, share a few settings in the at the end that will make it life a lot easier for the, using this camera for video as well. I'm not coming from a photog photography perspective at all. I'm coming from a con from a content creator, YouTube creator um, exclusively, and that's the way I need my camera to work, and that's the way I set it up. The first thing I did to set this camera up was to put what they call a cage on it, which is basically a very small form-fitted aluminum frame or exoskeleton uh, that goes over the body, and this does a couple different things. On this particular camera, if you have large hands, the grip is very difficult. It's very, this is a very, very tiny camera, and that's the appeal. And the bad side, I guess, about putting a grip on is you're starting to get away from what drew you to the camera in the first part, which is that small size. But if you have big hands, it starts to become a problem and it's difficult to manage. Also, I guess for a positive side of the cage, it gives you mounting points for different accessories that you might want to use. But for me, it gives durability. These cameras are not what I'm used to shooting yet. These are not professional body cameras, meaning that they're not built for really rugged use like my previous Canon, which is a 5D Mark IV, built like a tank. You can drop the thing. I didn't feel like I needed a cage with it, but this is a more of a delicate camera. So the cage for me does lots of things. It gives me extra grip, but it offers tremendous protection for the camera. You can see here it wraps around. Um, it fits in very nicely. It kind of forms forms to the camera very well. One of the most important things is it does not hinder the flip around screen, which is, this is a key thing. This is why there's just not very many suitable cameras out there for YouTube creators is because they lack this. And don't think you can get by without it if you're a one man person. Um, trust me, uh, you'll wish you had it, you wanna get it. So that really narrows the field. But everything is functional. There's some cool things about this one. This one's made by Small Rig. I think they're the only ones that make it. Um, it fits the camera very well. But the most important thing is that it allows access to the battery and the SD card, right? And that's really important. And it ties in very good. It's not gonna spin or twist. And having that built-in Swiss Acra style mount, which is what I use on there, is really an extra added uh, benefit. Also, another thing that's exceedingly vulnerable with these cameras is the uh, plug right there. This is the audio jack plug for the microphone. And this hangs out there and is very vulnerable. I've ruined several of them and it's very expensive to have it repaired and, and your camera is gonna be gone for a long time. So what I have found is anything that I can do to kind of protect that is worth doing. What I did, because this cage is drilled with a quarter and five sixteenths holes, which are standard for videography and, and such, I just built this little, basically a little bumper out of a, a cold shoe mount or a hot shoe mount uh, that had this knurled knob on there and I just threaded a quarter inch cap screw in there. And all that does is offer protection from this plug. Nothing is gonna hit it from the front. If I set the camera down, this is typically how these plugs get destroyed. You set them down on this, it's very fragile. It'll push it in and you just don't want that. So this does nothing more than protect that uh, plug uh, from being damaged. Also on the top, I've mounted, and this is an accessory. This is a NATO rail up here. It's just a short piece. Uh, it's also made by um, Small Rig. And that will rec receive anything that will clamp on a native rail. So if I'm not ca carrying the camera around, I want a sturdy handle um, that I can move the camera around connected to the tripod. This is 
connected directly to the cage so it's not putting any stress on the camera and it just doesn't interfere and it's very nice. If I want to add dual microphones and such, I have hot shoes or cold shoes on the front as well. The reason I like this microphone so well is that it actually works better. If you're behind the camera and in front of the camera, it works better for that. It picks up audio better from behind. So if you're filming, filming your family or you're uh, you know, catching, catching people and you want, you want to talk to them and have dialogue, you can get by. But if you put your mouth close to this, it actually picks up very well off the back where the VideoMic Pro and the Pro Plus don't. They're a little bit superior on the front end, but I mean, it, it, it's $60. And that's also the, the price of it is, is wonderful. And if I hang a big Herkin microphone on here, like a video mic pro well it, it gets it's ruining the whole thing it, it's getting back to big camera big equipment again so i'm all about finding something that's inexpensive that works really well um, but works all the time i don't have time for gimmicks and things that don't work it's got to work um, it's got to be durable and light and small and this really fits the bill so i have no complaints whatsoever it's also not near as obtrusive if you have this thing out in public, having the small furry on there is a whole lot better than having the giant ones that stick out. They just draw a lot of attention and usually kind of unwanted attention uh, when you're doing your thing out there. So that microphone has worked great. The rig, the small rig has got a little extra deal on the side, a little cold shoe so you can mount it at an angle. And that seems to work fine too. That way I can run my handle and, I, and not have to take the microphone off. I've just left it on there and it's been really great. As far as lenses go, um, I have a couple lenses for this, and I haven't used anything other than the 11 to 22. This is a APS-C sensor. That's right. So it's 1.6 crop, and the 11 to 22 is really great for all everything. You've got a little bit of zoom there, but it's uh, it's very wide. So if you're filming inside or small rooms or cars, as I said, it's excellent. It's not a fast lens, so unfortunately, it's not great in low light. And that's kind of where this whole camera falls down because of the lens selection is very limited. There are not a lot of fast lenses. The only fast lens I think for this is a, it's a prime, a 24 or 22 or 23 or something. Um, it's a prime lens and it doesn't have image stabilization. So it's just, it's a non-starter for me. It won't work. This has been a great lens. I've got the kit lens that came with it as well. It's like a 1546. I've never used it. I've never taken anything off. I've also added, they, they're not going to come with these little shrouds. I really like these shrouds because they keep rain off the glass and they, they offer a lot of protection if you're going to be bumping into things. It gives you a little bit of sun protection and I screw on just a cheap Amazon straight polarized filter on there for no other reason than to just to protect the glass from getting scratched. I can clean that or if I get a chainsaw throws a chip or something up on it, it's a $7 item versus a $400 lens. So that's um, that's kind of the way I set that up. One of the beauties of this camera is you can remap the buttons and program it to make it your workflow work better. And that's what puts it for me, I've got currently have an ADD and 5D Mark IV. It puts it ahead of those cameras in usability because they don't have they don't have those abilities. For example, so what I've done to set mine up to work really great with video one of the downsides you have with this is battery. The battery is a little bit small, and I heard a lot of complaints about that, that the batteries don't last. So I've got four batteries. I've never, on a long day shoot, I've never used more than three. Uh, I have not found it to be that bad because I've done a couple things. Um, I put it into eco mode in the settings, and I've mapped this bottom button right here to go ahead and turn the screen off. So that screen will stay on after you're done footing, f shooting footage. If you wake it up and hit record and hit stop, Right, it's going to stay on for a while. I've gotten in the habit of hitting that and turning that screen off, and that's increased longevity of the battery um, quite a bit, significant. Also, to be able to remap the shutter button uh, so that when you push the shutter button, like you would take a picture, hold down to focus and push it, that you're starting and stopping your record button. Uh, for your video. Instead of having this little fiddly one here on the right, which is recessed completely flat, actually recessed somewhat, uh, and it's impossible to find. So I actually have mapped that uh, to start and to stop right there. I can access it from the front or the rear. There's also, this is super handy, there's a custom function button here. You can make anything you want, and I've set that up to change the, auto, the, focusing, mo the focusing modes, because I switch between those all the time. If you want face tracking, because this camera has the best face tracking or dual pixel autofocus of any Canon I've ever used. It crushes the 5D4. It crushes the ADD. I don't know what they did, uh, but it's better. It's, it's so trustworthy that I, I just never have any problems with it. So I use those focus modes all the time. So I've mapped this here. 
So push it there and so I can go with my standard autofocus, which is if I'm just featuring a product, face recognition and pinpoint right there. So that I'm in all the time. Over here, I've switched this over to manual focus as well. So if you want to shoot in 4K, it actually has really great focus peaking, meaning that when you change the focus, you get these red, red lights that will tell you wherever the light it lights up, you're in focus. So you can manually focus this too if you're having problems with the automatic focus or it's not working for you. And that just autofocus turns on off and on right here. Manual focused autofocus. Very, very simple. Um, I've got mapped over here on this side to go up. What do I have there? Nothing. Um, I guess that's basically it. The shut off here, um, the autofocus or the focus modes up here uh, and the autofocus there. And I know I've changed other things, but that pretty much does it. Also, I've noticed in this camera is it has a much better, seems to have a better preamp in it. So the audio is better coming in than it is with any of my other Canon. So they've done some work on that. But overall, I mean, the flippy screen um, is very nice, although a bit delicate. But when you're setting these up, be careful. Don't put handles or anything over here. The reason why you're buying a camera with a flip out screen is so you can use it. So I see guys hide it and put an exterior, you know, monitor on it. It's like that completely, that just misses the whole point for me. I got to have that. So this thing here is bad enough, but it's better than a broken deal. So this is an awesome, awesome little camera. Now let's talk about the negatives. When it comes to the negatives, I guess the big elephant in the room is the, the lack uh, uh, or the heavy crop on the 4K and they, they've disabled dual pixel autofocus while using the 4K. And that's a bummer. Uh, don't, I would love to have, I'd love to have that feature. I would use it. But the reality is, is you probably don't have a computer that can handle 4K uh, unless you're really into that. It's going to be, they're going to be massive files. It's going to be long upload times. And it's at this current time, it's, it's really not necessary. 1080 is still pretty much the standard. It's what most people watch in any way. A lot of people can't tell the difference. There are some benefits to shooting 4K and having being able to zoom in, and it gives you a lot more flexibility in the in the editing side of it. But I, it's it's not that big of a deal. And we're not talking about an expensive camera here. So we're talking about a camera that you can per pick up with a kit lens for 599 presently, right? So that auto, that 4K deal is a bit of a bummer. Another huge bummer is they didn't put audio levels on the screen. Well, they did, but they put them in a place where you have to get in behind it and go through a menu to find them. And they're not out there all the time to see. And that's really a bummer uh, because more shots are lost for back, or videos are lost for bad audio or audio problems or just the microphone not being on uh, than anything else. And that is kind of a bummer, but with a good reliable microphone, if you're really careful and, and, and you go through your settings on your camera and you understand how it works, um, I have not had a problem with that yet. Uh, I don't always check it, but I probably should. So that audio deal uh, is a problem. Another downside to this camera is it's pretty terrible in low light. Again, that is primarily because of the lens, the lenses, these M lenses, there's just not a lot of them out there. And even this one, which is probably considered among the best, is a variable F, what, F4 to 5.6. Um, so that's not ideal. And it just completely falls apart, gets very grainy in the dark. You've seen the videos that I've shot in the shop in low light. And you know, compared to the camera like I'm filming on now, the 5D4, um, it's pretty terrible. But is it preventing you from telling a story? Uh, no, it's not. So it's all about trade-offs. So you have a little bit low light capability that's not quite as good, but you have a camera that's very small and a fourth of the price of the one you're watching me on right now, which is very big. Uh, so there is that. There's one other feature, and I don't know that if I'm going to be using it, but it's a very cool option, is that with a Canon adapter, with a factory adapter, that's mounted on this, you can run EF glass. So you can run the full professional, and, and if you have Canon lenses, um, you can use them with this little camera. And that is really an interesting concept. So what I'm talking about here is, so if we take off this, um, let's take off this little, little lens, the little small M mount there, whatever they call it. So this is actually an adapter, and this is a factory Canon part right there. There's no glass in it, but it adapts the flanges for the, pro lenses uh, to use on the little camera. So you can just line this up here. And this is pretty incredible uh, capability to be able to use now image stabilized professional glass on a small $600, $500 body. Have I covered all the downside? Is there any other downside to this? Um, man, I just can't think of anything. 
I, I do miss the weatherproofing. I do miss the, uh, the quality feel uh, of a pro body. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I do really enjoy that aspect of it. Um, and the, the delicacy of this, you have to be a little bit care more careful with it. You can't throw it around so much, but uh, with a cage, it seems to, I've kind of built in a little bit more durability that, that to me is acceptable. Um, the, the autofocus is the best I've ever used. Uh, the colors are beautiful. Uh, the form factor, the weight of it, uh, the functionality, functionality the, the way that you can remap buttons um, to make it kind of custom fit your particular need are all very, very welcome, wonderful things. Um, the downsides, the 4K is kind of a bummer, not a deal breaker. Uh, no audio levels is a total bummer, but not a deal breaker. Um, and I, I just don't really have anything else bad to say. Um, the controls are a bit tight, uh, no, no doubt, but that's that's to be expected. You know, you can't you can't really change that. But I'll tell you what, I, I have access to lots of nice cameras. Uh, I can use anything that I want to use, um, and I haven't used. I don't think I've used any one of my cameras uh, since I've got this. I've used it exclusively, and I've really enjoyed it. So. You just can't can't go wrong. What are you looking at cost-wise to put this together? Well, a body and a kit lens is going to cost you about $5.99. You don't need to go out and buy this expensive 11 to 22. That's an extra $3.50 or so. It's nice. You know, you might want to aspire to have it, but you could get by with a kit lens just fine. Um, when I bought this, I kind of thought, oh, do I do I really need it? Um, I'm, I have it, so I'm using it now. But I could do either one. Uh, the the cage with the little adapter is going to cost you. Let's say with shipping right around $100, you got $60 into a microphone. Buy yourself really good quality fast cards. Uh, you know, so that's 100 bucks for a 128 gig card. And um, I mean, that's basically it. Uh, that's about all you really need. It's a wonderful, <laughs> just a wonderful camera. It got destroyed and panned by all of the camera reviewers when it came out uh, and was just completely written off. Uh, but the funny thing, and Canon it seems to be a common thing with Canon, is they, they introduce a model and they do some pretty shady stuff, don't get me wrong. I mean, they hold back technology that they have that would make the user experience so much better, um, protecting their more expensive cameras. And that's, what, that's the way they do it, so you've got to kind of know that going into it. But it is a, it's a great camera, and, and I, I look back now, it's funny to see uh, how people that are actually using these cameras, these videos are actually starting to come up. I'm like, hey, wait a minute, this is, this is a pretty amazing little camera. How come we didn't hear about it? How come no one's talking about it? Well, it's because, you know, you get all of these guys that do all these video reviews, and I don't really know how much video work that they actually do. Um, and they just get this group speak and they think in 4K, 4K, and if it doesn't have this, and, and all they talk about is specifications. And if we're going to compare specifications to the Sony Alpha, you know, no, this isn't going to meet those specifications. But when it comes to usability and not being fiddly and every day just working with you and making your life a joy and ease, um, it doesn't matter what those function, some of those high end. Uh, fancy functions are uh, you just don't really need them anyway uh, so this is a great camera you could not go wrong with it um, I just love it to pieces so thanks for watching hope this helps and we'll see you guys in the next video